today we're in the center of the center of Mendoza. And uh, in that previous video, our first video here in Mendoza, we were in the, the old center of Mendoza, the Plaza Castillo, the Pedro de Castillo. And that was the center of Mendoza before the earthquake in 1861. After the earthquake in 1861, everything was basically destroyed here in Mendoza, and they had to rebuild from scratch. And where they decided to put the new center is right here, Plaza Independencia. And you can see that there's a famous landmark right there, the Heart Mendoza sign. And you can see there's people taking pictures in front of it. It's a very, very famous sort of landmark here where everyone's going to take pictures. And Plaza Independencia is a four square block plaza, very, very large plaza. And there's a lot of cool stuff here. It was designed by, uh, you know what? Let's get up and walk around while we talk about this. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick, thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. So it was designed by a Frenchman named Julio Balofe. And uh, he was born in France. You can see the sign over there a little closer. He was born in France and uh, studied there until he was in his late, like, late 20s. And then he moved to Argentina, lived in Buenos Aires. And after the earthquake in 1861, he came over here to Mendoza to try and uh, you know collaborate on the rebuild because he, uh, he was a civil engineer. He's an engineer, a surveyor, so the kind of skills that you would need when you're trying to rebuild a whole city. And he actually is the guy who is responsible for sketching out the whole design of the new city, including this right here, Plaza Independencia. As you can see, really big plaza. Goes all the way two blocks on either side, four square blocks in one giant plaza. And where we are right here, up top, where the sign is, down below, there's a fountain you probably saw when we were like giving you the whole, the whole look. You can go down there and take a look at the fountain. Now that fountain, there's a uh, set of uh, sculpted murals along there that I mentioned in our video uh, in Godoy Cruz, where we visited the Museum of Memory in Godoy Cruz. There were those really powerful moving sculptures in that museum by Argentine sculptor um, Eliana Molinelli. And she actually designed the, uh, the sculpted murals that are down here in front of this fountain. So let's go take a look. On our way down there, you can see the plaza these beautiful open green spaces, plenty of trees and benches, for people to sit. There's uh, some booths starting to set up over there because they often have vendors, you know, artists, street vendors and things like that who will come and set up their booths and sell, you know, items, gifts and things like that to tourists and locals, people coming through. Here's the fountain. Beautiful fountain. Now this fountain is a uh, like a dancing water fountain and they do like a dancing water show here. And you can see the sculpted murals on both sides of the center. Really beautiful. And actually, it's interesting that these murals are here on the side of this sort of uh, wall because underneath this, we'll go around the other side and take a look. But this, um, there's a museum that's actually uh, like underground, one level down and it's the Museum of Modern Art. Right here, 
Museum of Modern Art, Museo Municipal de Arte Moderno Mendoza. So right here in the middle of the plaza, basically in like the basement of the plaza, they have a, uh, a beautiful modern art museum that you can visit. There's a lot of stuff to love about Mendoza. And one of the things that I love, having only been here for a very short time, I already love the amount of trees that there are in this city. If you look around in the plaza, tons of huge trees. And like we mentioned, like we mentioned in our first video here, there's a whole system of uh, irrigation throughout the city, these like uh, water channels that run along the streets. Because Mendoza is situated out here in the high desert, there really should not be this many trees. They should not be able to grow this many trees. They should not be able to grow trees that are this that are this big, that have been alive for this long. Um, it's really amazing feat of engineering how they've managed to irrigate this many trees in a city that's out here in the high desert. Um, but it's really nice, especially when the days are really hot. Um, there's been a whole stretch of extremely hot days here about uh, 100 degrees Fahrenheit or about 39 degrees uh, Celsius for several days in a row. And there's gonna be more. Uh, so it's, it's, quite, it's quite hot, but in a nice uh, city, in a city that has like a lot of trees, there's always shade and the trees actually make it feel cooler. Um, so I really like that. I really like that about, about Mendoza, but we're getting off on a tangent. The reason we're here in Plaza Independencia is because we're going to be doing a series of videos. Now there's this central plaza here, but in the plan, outside on the four corners of this plaza, like about a block away in each direction, there are smaller plazas, one square block each. And there are four different plazas. Those four plazas out there, each named after something that has very important influence on Argentina now we're especially on here on Mendoza so we're gonna go see all of those plazas and then in future videos we're going to do basically one video for each one of those plazas because each one of those plazas um, like I said was inspired by something or that uh, or someone that is very important to Argentina and very important to Mendoza important enough that we can do a whole video on each one so we're gonna see all of those plazas today and then we're going to uh, do future videos, four of them coming up after this, that are going to be inspired by each one of those plazas. So uh, let's go, let's go, let's get out there and uh, let's see the first one. So this one that we're coming up on, Plaza San Martin. And of course, named after Jose de San Martin, the liberator of Argentina, uh, Peru, uh, Chile, a bunch of countries. Very important guy. Hero of uh, South American liberation. Anyway, this Plaza San Martin, this is kind of a weird one because this one was, uh, this one was originally, you know, like I had mentioned, they've changed names of all of these plazas over the years, sometimes more than once. And this one was originally Plaza Cobo. It was named after Juan Francisco Cobo. And that guy's actually really interesting too. Uh, he was the first foreign, uh, like foreigner nationalized as an Argentine citizen after Argentine independence. And he was Spanish. So basically, Argentina had just fought a war for independence from the Spanish. And uh, he was Spanish, he was born in Spain, but he lived in Argentina and he helped um, San Martin raise the army of the Andes, which they, uh, let's see if I can cross the street here without getting run over, oh, which they, ra they raised the army to march across the Andes and liberate Chile after they had uh, fought in the War of Liberation here in Argentina. And he helped with that. And so afterwards, as a reward, probably because he wasn't very popular in Spain anymore, uh, he was given Argentine independence. He was the first uh, foreigner nationalized 
as an Argentine citizen. Anyway, put the camera around here. We can take a look. Beautiful Plaza San Martin. So like I said, this used to be Plaza Cobo. And actually, there was a Plaza San Martin before this one. It is what is currently Plaza Chile, which we're gonna see. And what's crazy, like I mentioned, they change names around a lot. Plaza San Martin originally was Plaza Chile. So it was Plaza Chile, then it was Plaza San Martin. Then when they named this one San Martin, which used to be Cobo, they changed the other Plaza San Martin to Plaza Cobo. So they basically just like switched places. And then, I don't know, like 20 years later or so, they renamed the now Plaza Cobo, formerly Plaza San Martin, back to Plaza Chile, which it is now. Anyway, it's, very, it's, it's all very confusing. A lot of stuff went down, a lot of names changed. But anyway, here's San Martin on his horse. And this statue of San Martin riding on his horse like this, there's a statue like this in like almost every city in Buenos Aires, usually more than one. Uh, there was one of these in, or every city in Argentina, I mean. Um, there was one in Buenos Aires, there was one in Cordoba, there's one here in Mendoza, of course. And this is not the only um, thing named after San Martin around here. Everything's named after San Martin around here, not just here. Here and in Chile and in Peru and all over the place in South America. He's a very important guy. I'd say he's right up there, as important as like uh, Simon Bolivar. So it's the reason why you see San Martin and Simon Bolivar all, you know, all over South America. Statues, streets, towns, neighborhoods, parks. They're on the money. Big deal. Very big deal. Anyway, it's a pretty simple plaza. Really nice. Lots of people just relaxing out today. It's kind of a hot day. Everybody's hanging out in the shade. Of course, the flag of Argentina there. Statue in the center. And just like a, a lot of nice places to sort of sit and relax. Trees keep everybody nice and shaded on a hot day like this. It has these little uh, irrigation, which is really cool. Or not irrigation, I guess this is like for water drainage, right? So that the water drains out of the plaza real easily. These run like all around the edge of the plaza. It's really nice. Good design, very, very good design here in Mendoza, I've noticed, of like uh, the design of the plazas, the design of the streets, the design of the irrigation system that keeps all the trees watered along the streets, up in you know the high desert here. So, so that's it, Plaza San Martin. One of four of the smaller plazas that are on the outside of the big, big plaza in the middle, Plaza Independencia. We go check out the next plaza, and that's the one we were talking about, Plaza Chile. And Plaza Chile, of course, which used to be San Martin, and then was it was Chile, and then San Martin, and then Cobo, and now is Plaza Chile again. Anyway, let's go ahead and head over there. So we're here, Plaza Chile. And this one, Plaza Chile, was named Chile because after the 1861 earthquake, Chile was uh, like a country that uh, helped Argentina rebuild. They donated a lot of money um, or, or lent a lot of money. I'm not sure exactly how it worked, but they helped the reconstruction um, along with Peru, which is one of the reasons why one of these other plazas, which we're going to see later, was originally Plaza Lima. But that got changed. But anyway, we're getting off topic. Plaza Chile, very beautiful. There's a fountain in the middle, and you can see on the fountain there's like a mosaic in the colors of the Chilean flag, which is red, white, and blue. And there's a star. You can see over here. There's a star inside, white star inside a blue square, which is just like it is on the Chilean flag. And these benches they have installed have mosaics that are all in the colors of the Chilean flag with the stars. So it looks a lot like the Chilean flag. It's a really beautiful plaza. There's a little park over there, like a little playground. The kids can play. 
Now this was redesigned actually in, uh, I want to say 2009. They added a bunch of benches, uh, these benches for sitting. And they added some drinking fountains around the outside of the plaza. There's a large flagpole here that usually would have the Argentine flag on it, but it's not on there for some reason. But the most important thing in the plaza, the central, uh, other than this fountain, I guess, the central thing is right here. Amistad Immortal. This is the statue of immortal brotherhood between San Martin and Bernardo O'Higgins. We have, we've talked about San Martin, of course, but we haven't talked about Bernardo O'Higgins. He was a criollo, or a person uh, born here, you know, of Spanish descent, but born here in, uh, in the Americas, and in Chile. And he was a, uh, someone who was fighting in the revolution in Chile, leading his, um, his army, and was defeated, actually, by the Spanish. And his army had to retreat along with him. He, he retreated over the Andes here to Mendoza. And he helped San Martin raising the army of the Andes, going back across the Andes to liberate Chile a few years later. So here you can see both of them there. Uh, Higgins on the left. You can see Higgins on his chest has a star. It's the star of Chile. And San Martin next to him has the crest of uh, Argentina. And they're both holding the hilt of this sword together. And on the base of the statue, Amistad, Immortal, O'Higgins, San Martin, Argentina, Chile. The current relations between Argentina and Chile are, they're pretty good. Uh, there have been some border disputes over the years. The border of Patagonia and um, I mean, they, they share a very, very long border. And there are some, um, there are some other issues that, uh, that we'll definitely go into in the uh, specific video on Chile and Argentina. Um, but for the most part, they have pretty good relations. So that's it, Plaza Chile. Now, interestingly, Plaza Chile, like we mentioned, a lot of uh, these plazas have had their names changed. This Plaza Chile was Plaza Chile, for about 20 years after the earthquake in 1861. Then it got renamed Plaza Jose de San Martin because there was no plaza dedicated to San Martin. And he is of course the liberator, very important guy. So you gotta have a Plaza San Martin. But uh, after the other Plaza San Martin, which we just saw, was renamed San Martin, then this one was renamed Kobo because that one used to be Kobo. So they switched and then about 20 years after that, this one was renamed Chile again. I don't quite understand it. They probably should have just kept this one Chile and made that one San Martin and maybe put Plaza Kobo somewhere else. Of course you can see here they have these irrigation drainage ditches on this plaza as well. Very good design, so the plaza itself doesn't get like flooded and waterlogged. There's a little plaque here that shows uh, when they remodeled it in 2009. You can see at the bottom, February 2009. And uh, some of the people who were uh, who were in charge of the remodel, the flags of Argentina and Chile here together, and a. Uh, battle scene of what I would imagine is a battle in Chile at some point. So there you go. Another beautiful plaza. Take one last look. And the next one we're going to head over to is what I mentioned before it used to be Plaza Lima, but it's now Plaza Italia. So that'll be next. Oh, so we're here in Plaza Italia, which beautiful plaza right at the corner of Peru and Montevideo, which seems ironic because Montevideo is the capital of Uruguay and Peru is the country here in South America, of course. But this plaza actually was not always Plaza Italia. It was originally Plaza Lima. 
and it was named after the capital of Peru because after the earthquake in 1861, um, Peru, like Chile, helped uh, rebuild the city. They, they, uh, there were a lot of funds that came from there and in honor of that, uh, their aid during that time of need here in Mendoza, they named the plaza Plaza Lima. So it's a beautiful, beautiful plaza. This is probably, mm, I would say like my second favorite of the four outer plazas. Um, my favorite one we're gonna see next. I saved that one for last. But uh, originally, like I said, this was Plaza Lima, but in uh, 1918, it was renamed Plaza Italia. And that's because they wanted to uh, sort of pay homage to all the Italian immigrants who had come to uh, Argentina, especially out to Mendoza here, um, during the immigration boom, the European immigration boom from 1885 or so up until the beginning um, of World War II. So by this point, 1918, when they named it, there were a ton of Italian immigrants in Argentina. In fact, Italian immigrants and people of Italian descent make up a huge, huge portion of the population here in Argentina. I mean, we've, we've done videos about like Muslims in Argentina, um, European Jews in Argentina, Germanic people in Argentina, and people of Germanic descent. We've done all those videos. And of course, there's plenty of videos about, you know, the Spanish influence on Argentina because it was a Spanish colony, but Italians and people of Italian descent make up um, the, the largest um, percentage of people in, in Argentina by ethnicity. So that's why that's why this is Plaza Italia. And of course, there's plenty to talk about when it comes to Italians in Argentina, but just take a look at this beautiful plaza. They've got all these sculptures. The fountain in the middle is actually new. It's, um, I believe it's like a tribute to Dante Alighieri in the Divine Comedy, but this was, this was put in new very recently. The main monument is like a tribute to the brotherhood between Argentina and Italy. You can see when you get closer. Repubblica Italiana, there on the right. And Argentina on the left. It's a really beautiful monument. Pretty big sort of towers above the entire square. The back side of the fountain here. And then over here, on this side, there's a monument that they put up recently, which is a monument of the she-wolf with uh, Romulus and Remus nursing from the she-wolf. And this is, of course, if you know your Roman history, this is basically the myth of the foundation of Rome that Romulus and Remus suckled from a she-wolf and, I don't know, founded a city, I guess. Anyway, that's a very Roman-inspired statue. And then over on the other side, there's a statue in honor to Italian immigrants. Italiano, immigrante. Really beautiful. It's a bit of a glare from the sun, but it's a beautiful, beautiful statue. And they placed this one here, I think, in 2008. So this plaza's been continuously updated over the years. Just keeps getting more and more beautiful as far as I'm concerned. And as much as uh, Lima definitely deserves um, you know, tribute after how they helped rebuild the city of Mendoza. Um, I think I think it stands that Plaza Italia makes a lot of sense given the amount of uh, Italian immigrants and people of Italian descent here in Argentina. I mean, it's a huge, huge part of Argentine culture, and we're definitely going to learn more about that in future videos. But take a quick look around the plaza. Gorgeous, 
lots of trees. Mendoza, I mean, there's just tons of trees all over this city, which is one of the things I love about it. Nice little playground area over here for the kids. And that's it. Plaza Italia, very, very beautiful. Very beautiful plaza here. Like I said, probably my second favorite plaza of the four outer plazas. So now, of course, we've seen the first three, and I've said this is my second favorite. So there's one that we still haven't seen. We're saving it for last. And we're gonna head over there right now. All right, so we're here at my favorite of the four outer plazas. And the last one in our video, this is beautiful. Beautiful. Plaza España. And I love Plaza España. This is definitely my favorite. I like it because, unlike the other plazas, the entire thing, if you look, the entire thing has these tiles, right? The whole thing is tiled. It's really beautiful. Instead of having like a concrete, kind of ugly look, it's got these beautiful Spanish looking tiles. There's these sort of bench planter areas like this that have this beautiful mosaic tile on everything. And the same thing in the center, uh, like even around the base of the lights here. There's these beautiful, uh, beautiful mosaic tiles. And that's throughout the entire plaza. Lots of trees, of course. This is Mendoza. Mendoza has, of course, beautiful, beautiful trees. A city known for its trees. And drinking fountains uh, in this park have also like the same, um, the same mosaic on them. Everything around here has this. It's really, really beautiful. Right here in the center of the plaza, there's a gorgeous fountain, which uh, is not running right now. But very beautiful, detailed mosaic along the entire thing. And uh, at the center of the plaza, there's this beautiful sculpture with like a frieze mural along the bottom. And this is actually really significant. This is the monument to the Brotherhood of Spain and Argentina. Sculpture at the top, uh, I unfortunately can't remember the name of the sculpture. I'll put it in the subtitle. But the woman on the left, that signifies Spain. And then the younger woman on the right signifies Argentina. Like, like Spain, right? But like youthful. She's the daughter of Spain. And she's holding grapes in her hand, as you can see, to symbolize Mendoza, because of course, Famous for their grapes and their wine. And below, or in between them, there's a one of Christopher Columbus's ships. And below, an oxen pulling a plow to symbolize like the fertile farmland around here. And down here, the mosaic mural. You can see a little like uh, history Columbus's uh, voyage in 1492. And in the center, this is the founding, the original foundation site by uh, um, Pedro del Castillo. And we have the seal of the province of Mendoza right here. And then this is a shows off the missionaries, Jesuit missionaries. And this is actually a scene from um, like a Don Quixote, scene from Don Quixote. It's more history over here. It's really beautiful. It's a large, large bureau that goes really well with the statue above it, I think makes the square, like it's, it towers over the square and it makes it look really, really cool. So, definitely my favorite of the plazas. And uh, 
the interesting thing about this, just like the other plazas, this one wasn't always Plaza España. It was actually originally Plaza Montevideo, because it's on Montevideo Street. And uh, then it was changed to, I think, Plaza Carlos Pellegrini, who was like a, a former president of Argentina. And then eventually in like the 1940s, it was changed to Plaza España. So take another look around. I'm just gonna get a quick walk around and we can look again because it really is like such a beautiful plaza. And I also really like, all these plazas sort of have like a little micro neighborhood around them. And I've been to all of them. And I think this one's kind of my favorite, the little neighborhood that's around here. It's a really nice neighborhood with a lot of like restaurants and bars and whatnot. Um, there's a lot of trees around, of course, really beautiful. And I always see a lot of people out in this plaza. Um, some of the other plazas seem like a little bit empty sometimes, but this one seems to have a lot of people congregating in it at like all times of the day. So really lively neighborhood, really nice. And uh, yeah, that's, that's my favorite plaza, Plaza España. And of course, this is gonna be the inspiration for another video that we do in the future, a video about the relationship between Spain and Argentina and the history there. And that's gonna be really interesting. So make sure you take, uh, you know, keep an eye out for that video coming out soon. I think we've seen what we can see here in Plaza España. So uh, yeah, I think there's one, one more thing that we wanna see before we end the video, a little bonus. And uh, let's head over there now. So before we finish it off, this video I had to end with another uh, interesting part of the central part of Mendoza city. And that is Paseo Peotonal Sarmiento, which is this beautiful pedestrian walk that runs like from Plaza Independencia for like three blocks out to uh, Avenida San Martin and it was it was put here well one it's named after um, Domingo Faustino Sarmiento who's like a former president of Argentina um, and this was I think built in the 80s 80 1989 I think beautiful beautiful pedestrian walk with shops and cafes lining the whole thing and it's really nice uh, to come here, hit up a restaurant or a cafe or something. As in, with all places around Mendoza, there's plenty of trees for shade. And uh, there's uh, fountains along the way. You can see one of them like right there. And the water channels that run through the whole part of the city run along here as well, keeping all the trees irrigated. It's a really, really beautiful um, addition to the city. And like I said, 1989, I believe they put it in here. So it's already more than 30 years old, but still very busy. Lots of uh, shops and restaurants along, along the street here. And one other thing that I really like about this walk is there is actually like a little, um, like a little mall shop sort of right let's see where is it I think it's actually on the next block I'm gonna head down and see it because I walked in there uh, the first time I walked through this street and I checked it out and inside it's there's like um, you know honestly it's kind of like in like a mall in the United States where you would find like tucked away back in some corner there'd be like a shoe repair place and like a locksmith where you can get keys made it's kind of like that but inside the building it's just a really cool building with like this big stained glass um, skylight very cool um, but here look take a look at this it's a beautiful pedestrian walk I mean look at this this is really nice and this has become sort of a, a meeting place and a gathering place for uh, not just tourists, but also, you know, all the locals come find a cafe, sit out here when the weather's nice, which it often is around here at Mendoza. And, uh, you know, you can meet up 
hang out with some friends, family, have a, have a coffee. Dos Media Lunas. It's a nice, nice place. Oh, here's the, uh, here's the mall I was mentioning. So it's just this tiny, like, uh, little indoor spot with a few kiosks selling, you know, gifts and whatnot. But the architecture inside is really cool. And uh, you can see there's like these these stained glass uh, skylights up on the ceiling. Really, really cool. When you get back inside, right here, there's this big glass dome, stained glass skylight. I think it's really, really cool. This is an older building, you can tell from the architecture. And like I said, there's little shops in here. Some of them are closed right now. But very cool, a very cool addition to uh, to uh, Peotonal Sarmiento. Anyway, let's head back outside. So at the end of the pedestrian street here on Avenida San Martin, and uh, we're gonna head back, head back to our apartment because it's getting, well, it's not getting, it is really hot. <laughs> it's blazing hot and I've been out for a while. I wanna, chill out some air conditioning but this video like I mentioned each one of the four outer plazas is going to be an inspiration for a future video Plaza San Martin a video about San Martin Chile a video about the uh, history between Argentina and Chile and uh, Italia a video about Italians in Argentina which of course long and rich storied history and then Plaza España, in which we will talk about not just the uh, Spanish colonial influence, which we've already talked about a lot, but also more recent Spanish immigration from Spain in post-colonial Argentina, which you don't think about much, but it has happened. And uh, there are actually quite a few people of Spanish descent who were not, you know, from like pre-colonial days, but who emigrated here, immigrated here to Argentina uh, after, after Argentine independence. So we'll talk about that too. Um, lots of good stuff still to see here in Mendoza. So I hope you stay tuned for all those future videos and we'll see you next time.